in the last video about profile likelihood, I gave an example which might have been too hard and too complex to understand profile likelihood. So I want in this video to give two simpler examples of how to use profile likelihood uh, in order to get uh, a graph and also a confidence interval for a parameter. The first example I will show is just how to uh, get a profile likelihood for the regular and uh, maximum likelihood estimators from a normal distribution. And the second example will be uh, of the parameters in a regular linear regression, which means the slope and the intercept. Okay, so for the first example, remember that if we have data that is coming from a normal distribution, okay, so the log likelihood is equal to sum, and this is a function of both mu and theta squared, yeah? And we can give different values of mu and different values of sigma squared and get the log likelihood. And in fact, we can draw a contour map where let's say on one axis we have the mu and on the other axis we have the sigma. And we can draw um, a contour map showing uh, the log likelihood. For example, it could look like something like this, where this point over here is the uh, maximum likelihood. Yeah? And Again, what profile likelihood does is basically transforming this uh, 3D graph into a 2D graph. It will collapse one of the axes depending which profile likelihood function we will choose, if it's the one depending on mu or the one depending on sigma. And it will take this and collapse this to something like this. And then with reversing the likelihood ratio test, we can also get a confidence interval of mu and say that mu is only uh, with 95% uh, confidence, we can say that mu is probably somewhere over here. Yeah, and the same we can do for sigma square. And so let's see this in action in R. I will draw from a standard normal distribution. And we can see that uh, our x bar, our average, our sample mean is almost zero, it's 0 0.13, and that our estimate for sigma is almost one, it's 0 0.98. Yeah. And we can create a log function, a log likelihood function. And the first thing we can do is we can plot the contour of our log likelihood as a function over the mu sigma plane. This is what I'm doing here. I'm creating a sequence of values for mu's between minus 2 and 2, a sequence of values for sigma's between 0 0.5 and 2, and then I'm calculating the log likelihood for each one of these values, and I create a contour map of this. And you can see that the highest value, the highest likelihood is somewhere over here. It's somewhere very, very close to 0 on the mu and 1 on the sigma squared, or sigma in this case. And this, this is right, this is what the data really came from, so we expected it to be like this. Okay, we can also uh, create a 3D figure of this, okay? And you can see here the 3D plot, and I don't know if you can see it, but this point over here is higher than the rest here. And you can see the, the circle gets smaller and smaller, and over here, where our x, which is the mu here, is close to zero, and our y, which is the sigma, is close to one. This is the maximum likelihood. I prefer the contour map. And now what we want to do is create a profile likelihood function for, let's say, mu. So for each value of mu, I want to calculate the log likelihood, the maximum log likelihood. Um, so the way to do this is we need for each value of mu to calculate the sigma, which will maximize the log likelihood. And this sigma is this thing over here. And let me just show you this real quick. I can prove it to you. Yeah. So if I know mu and then I just differentiate with regards to sigma square, then I get a sum. And if we compare this to zero, then we can cancel the half 
over here it's a constant so n sigma squared n divided by sigma squared if we move it here over here to the other side we will get n over sigma squared and here we have x minus mu squared sum yeah this is xi um, divided by sigma squared squared and if we multiply this by sigma squared squared and note we have to assume that sigma squared is not equal to zero then we get and we divide also by n we get that sigma squared hat is the sum of xi minus mu squared divided by n which is not surprising this is also the mle estimator for sigma squared and so this is what i did here this is basically what i calculated over here and then we just calculate the log likelihood of that specific mu and the maximum sigma that we found here and so this is our profile likelihood function and then we can take all the values of mu's that we had before and for each one compute the profile likelihood function and then we can just plot this and then this is the graph that i was telling you that you move from three dimension to two dimension and now we only have two dimension the mu on this axis and the log likelihood is a function of mu over here and we can see that the peak is really close to zero actually the peak will be the mle uh, of this which is 0 0.13 and once we have this then we can also compute the confidence interval so we just reverse the general likelihood ratio test as i've shown in the previous video and this is what I'm doing here. And this is the profile likelihood confidence interval that we get for the mu. And we can compare this to the actual MLE confidence interval. We can also do this in this way and we can do it in this way. And we can see that we are kind of close, but not exact because this is not the same method. The profile likelihood uses a different test to compute the confidence interval. So the results are close, but they're not exactly the same. Now we can do exactly the same for the sigma. We can, we can construct a profile likelihood function of sigma, where we give it a sigma and we choose the mu that is best. In this case, mu is not really depending on sigma. And we can also see this, but if we uh, differentiate with regards to mu. So if I differentiate this function over here, yeah, the L, with regarding to mu, then this term has nothing, this term has nothing, only here I get the mu, and I will get sum yeah, over i, xi, and if, this, if I compare this to zero, then the sigma squared does not have any role in here, and all I get in the end is that the estimate for mu is just uh, the sample average. And so this is what I have here. Yeah? But nevertheless, we can construct this function. We can apply this for the sequence of values of sigmas that we have, and we can plot it. And you can see that th we again move from a three-dimensional graph to a two-dimensional graph, where we have sigma on one axis and the log likelihood as a function of sigma on the other axis. And we again can compute the confidence interval, the profile likelihood confidence interval, and we get that it's somewhere between 0 0.87 to 1.13, which is correct. The correct sigma will be 1. And here also we can compare this with the theoretical confidence interval. And we get something close, but again, not exactly the same. And this formula over here, it's based on the fact that if you studied statistical theory, then the variance the sample variance distributes sigma square divided by n minus one chi square with n minus one degrees of freedom and from this we can get that yeah and uh, so we get from here that with 95 degrees of 95 percent confidence and from here we can get that sigma squared is between yeah, and this is exactly the formula that I put over here. And uh, if we want sigma and not sigma square, we have to take the square root of this. 
Okay, so this was the first example. And now let's move to the second example where we have a linear regression. So in a linear regression, what we have is some formula. Yeah, y is equal to some intercept plus some slope times an explanatory variable. And usually this is also with some noise, yeah, with some ui, where the ui is normal with some variance. In our case, let's assume that the variance is 1. Okay, so here we have that our coefficients, the things we want to estimate are a and b. So what we will do, we will cre use the linear regression model and we'll calculate for each value of a, the value of b that maximizes uh, the log likelihood of the data. And the same we will do in reverse. So for each value of b, we will calculate the value of a that gives the maximum likelihood of the data. And so let's do this in R. Let's first create the regression, the regression data and fit a model to it. So I'm just taking x to be from 3 to 8, and I'm taking a model which has an in intercept of 3 and uh, a slope of 1.5. And you can see the data over here. This is the data I generated. And now I'm fitting a model to it. And what I will do for the profile likelihood function of A uh, is for every value of a, I will compute, uh, I will fit a new model without a, where I will just give a as an offset. An offset means that the model doesn't try to fit a coefficient to this, it just takes the a as given. And so what this model will do, it will just give me some slope coefficient, it will estimate the slope coefficient that will maximize the likelihood of the data. And then it will give the log likelihood of this fit. Okay, so if we do this, then the profile likelihood, uh, given the maximum likelihood estimator of, this, of the intercept, this is equal to the maximum likelihood estimator of the coefficients. Okay, and we can also do give different values of A's and then complete compute for each of, the, of these a's, their profile likelihood, and we can plot this. We know that a is actually 3, but our model had some noise in it, so the MLE for a is actually uh, over here. And we can do the same for b. For each value of b, we calculate a linear model where the model doesn't try to fit b anymore. It just tries to fit an intercept. It takes b as an offset. Okay, and once we do this, we can, again, compute the profile likelihood at the MLE, and again, it will be equal to the maximum likelihood. And again, we can, for different values of B, calculate the profile likelihood and get a graph like this. And we can also calculate confidence interval. And for our intercept, we see that the interval is between 2 and 3.76, and we know that the real intercept was 3, so this is good. And for our slope, we get that the slope the confidence interval is between 1.34 and 1.75, and we know that the real slope is 1.5, so again, uh, it's okay. And notice that if I would do confint function over this fit, um, I would get something close but not exact, and the reason is that this is a different test. This is used something that is called the wall test, and it's not exactly the same as the likelihood ratio test, and so inverting the likelihood ratio test gives close results, but not exact. So these are the two examples I wanted to show in this video. Thank you for watching.